is uh, determining the domain of the function. And again, guys, you guys can see that we have two constraints. We have x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0, and x minus 7, what, uh, whatever values um, we know that cannot equal 0, right? So for here, we're just going to solve the inequality. x has to be greater than or equal to 3. And then here, we solve this equation. x cannot equal 7. So we know that when x is equal to 7, that makes the denominator 0. So that cannot be a value that's in our domain. And we know that for any value that's less than 3, that's going to make my radical negative. right? Think of like 1. That's going to make the radical negative. That's not in the domain, correct? So let's kind of like do a little graph here. If let's say here's 3. Well, if this x is greater than or equal to 3, so it's a solid dot going right there. But then we have this random number 7 it can't equal to, right? So, you know, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7. So right here, we have this little hole. So what's happened, how we write our domain is kind of like how we did um, in those rational ones. You want to write the domain from the left, and then you want to write the domain to the right of it. So the first one to left, you need to do smallest and largest. So the smallest value we have that's a part of our domain is 3, and that's in included or excluded? So parentheses all the way to 7. Is 7 included? No. And then we hop over to the other side of the hole, and we say, OK, we're going to go from 7 all the way to infinity. And then, just to be nice, we, give, we marry them. OK? That's it. All right. So 